Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Now our fun-filled episode of House of Gilliland is underway. Mm. It's a very good Oreo. Today, we will be talking about kaiju movies with my good friend Seb. As well as him going to film school, some of his movies he's done. He's a very young man. I forgot how old he is. But he's young. Um, he made a movie called Out of the Box, as well as The Fix. I feel like he's made other movies. We'll get him on here. We'll ask him all questions we need to ask him. He's an expert on Godzilla. He's an expert on horror movies in general. He usually has a differing opinion. Differ. <coughs> Take two. He has a differing opinion from me because he's so much younger than me. So it's kind of nice to talk about stuff with him because most people my age, we agree on the same shit. So I like talking to people who have differing opinions because we can argue about movies. And that's what's, that's where it's at, man. You gotta argue about a movie every once in a while. Before we start the interview, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Godin? Uh, it's uh, Godin. Godin? Godin? Yeah. Godin. Godin? Godin. Godin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been friends with you. I've been friends with you for like six years. And I've never been able to pronounce your last name. Yeah. Uh, French names. All right, buddy. Well, um, so I thought we'd we'd talk about some kaiju stuff since you're an expert on the topic. You know a lot more about the kaiju world than I do. But uh, yeah, yeah. Before we go into all that, let's talk. So. Do you only have two short movies? I thought you made a movie, another movie, before you started going to film school. Yeah, I've made about, I've made about six shorts in total, but the two that I have been showing around now are my most polished work, so I consider them my first official films. Okay. In a lot of ways. Awesome, yeah. I'm, I've made about a hundred short movies, and I only have one that I consider decent enough to show people. <laughs> it's so depressing. <laughs> But, um, so, so the two polished movies is Out of the Box, which was, that was your first school project, right? Yeah, well, it was the first sound project. The first one that had a linear story. Okay, cool. And then, and then you just did the fix recently, right? Yep, the fix was completed this past January. So, what's the time difference between those two projects? About a year or two years? Uh... Yeah, a full year between the two of them. Because I noticed a drastic difference. Like, in, like I really liked Out of the Box. That's more my kind of, you know, movie. But The Fix is, like, there's, like, a level of professionalism that came out. You know, it's it's amazing how much you change over just a year, how much you, your art can develop. You know what I'm saying at all? Like, Oh, yeah, I totally get it. My favorite thing, uh, I interviewed Sonny Fernandez last week, and my favorite thing about his movies is he knew nothing when he started making his first movie, and the difference between his first movie and his tenth movie is, it's amazing how, like, much he learned, and you can watch as he learned. You can say the same thing with Evil Dead through Army of Darkness. You watch as... Oh, totally. Like, you learn from each thing you make, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like just... The experience of making out of the box influenced the experience of making the fix, which will influence the experience of making the next one, and so on and so forth. So it'll just keep getting better, no matter who you are. I think. Yeah. Well, and then I think sometimes you can go, you can get too good. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I don't like Sam Raimi that much anymore. I, I, you know, Evil Dead. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, or or even George Romero. George Romero is one of my heroes, but I feel like he's even eaten into his own. Thing that he created Dude, his last two movies were his last two movies were such shit yeah they such were. shit and, and 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 then even bruiser was pretty bad but i mean his he'd been around he when he did bruiser he'd been around for 32 years already so yeah i think you yeah could... i've never seen bruiser but i've heard bad things then on the other hand i think like people like quentin tarantino i think his movies are the best that they've ever been 
Yeah, but he's at his peak, right? He hasn't hit that slump like uh, Romero. He's not at that time in his life just yet. Oh, I'm hoping he's being genuine when he says he's going to do 10 movies and he's going to stop filmmaking. I don't think that's possible. I think if you are if you want to be a filmmaker, you're, it's something you'll always pursue in life. But he doesn't want to end up like that is his thing. He wants to get up to his 10th movie and then he's going to retire. I get the logic there, but I don't. I can't imagine him sticking to that. It's it's like Rob Zombie saying, "I'm never going to do a horror movie again after Lords of Salem." It's like, and then what happened? You know, a couple of years later, there's another horror movie from him. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, he wanted to do that uh, hockey movie, and that fell through. So uh, I guess he just figured out that nobody wanted him doing anything but horror. Yeah, but you know, Kevin's. You know Kevin Smith did uh he did Tusk and he's doing horror movies now which I love that he went from doing like stoner you know comedies to doing horror movies. Yeah, and I think that's great because even if you look at stuff like Clerks or Mallrats, the character dynamics in there would translate perfectly to almost any genre and I think he's got a real affinity for horror movies that really showed in Tusk. I really dug that movie. Rubber monster movies, man. Yeah, so he calls it a rubber the monster. Best. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're monster guys. Obvi- well, we we're going to talk about Godzilla, so obviously we like rubber monsters. But What's um, what's some of your, your greatest inspirations for your movies, would you say? Your favorite, like, maybe filmmakers or just the biggest inspirations? Not necessarily your favorite movies, but inspiration stuff. Well, each project I do has, like, a, a different series of inspiration. So for, like, Out of the Box, I was inspired by stuff like Creep Show. Oh, I'm so happy you said what? that. I was going to ask you if you were... Okay, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Like, Creep Show, the crate story, of course, was yeah. a big inspiration. That's what I was thinking um, about. Stuff like that. Uh, for The Fix, it was more like Cronenberg yes. body horror things. Cron- uh, I'd say my top five biggest inspirations for filmmaking are uh david cronenberg ed wood lucio fulci um sakamoto and maybe brian yuzna yeah okay brian you know what i'd say brian yuzna might be my biggest inspiration oh he's a genius the it, dude's so underrated he is and in his movies are my biggest thing in a, in a cheesy horror movie is the more chaotic it gets, the better. And I feel like he achieves that level. Like, Beyond Reanimator is one of them. has the craziest movie ever made. <laughs> I still haven't seen Beyond by Adore Bride. So yeah. The meltdown at the end of that movie, that's everything I want in a movie. I want it to be a huge build-up, and then I want it to be very, very bloody and chaotic at the end. Or, uh, have you ever seen Faust, Love for the Damned? Yeah, that movie's amazing. Yeah, that movie's nuts. It gets crazy at the end. <laughs> With uh, the giant snake coming out of Jeffrey Combs and the yeah. sacrifice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cronenberg's Canadian, right? Yes, he is a fellow Ontarian. Awesome. So you're from Ontario. Well, um, was there anything that you wanted to plug on your projects? Or you get ready to work on a, a feature, right? Yeah, yeah, I am. I just finished acting in a feature, and now I'm... Uh, currently in pre-production on my own first feature film which will be shot exactly one year from now it's going to be shot in june of 2016 2017 2017 are you going to be done with uh, college by then yeah i my intention is to graduate and then move immediately into the feature are you going to stay in ontario or are you would you relocate somewhere like toronto i am going to shoot this one here in town and then i intend to move to uh london ontario which is just about three hours off from toronto very cool very cool yeah i've always i've always wanted to go out there and make a movie some of my favorite horror movies are canadian but i mean kevin smith is kind of he's like the american guy who goes to canada to make horror movies right now so i uh, come do it he's he i mean he's making money doing it yeah he <laughs> is <laughs> it's hollywood north man i love that stuff yeah. All right. Well, let's let's jump into the the kaiju stuff while we still got some time left. I'm a I'm a pretty big fan of Godzilla. I dig Godzilla, but I know you're way more well versed on the topic. What is your favorite era in the Godzilla? There's four of them, right? Yeah, yeah. There are now four of them. It's weird to think because I'm so used to it just being the Showa Heisei Millennium, but now we're entering the uh, the Shin era. 
What's the '90s? Is that part of the millennium? What? No, no, that's uh, that's Heisei. Heisei is my favorite by far. Yeah, me too. Those are the those are so much fun. I could watch those things all day long and never get sick of them. Yeah, and and I I do not like the millennium one. I I didn't I I watched them. I I was eighteen. Although I like Final Wars. There's just something. I, yeah, I like. I like them all quite a bit. My favorite, like, I like, uh, I, I don't think there's a single one I honestly hate out of all of them. I think they all have some redeeming value. That's true, yeah. I can agree with that. I guess that would be my least favorite, which, it, you know, if it's something that you really like. I, don't, I just watched that at a time in my life when maybe I just wasn't, I don't know, I don't know what happened there. Because, you know, I grew up watching, I, I was alive, in, or I was a little kid in the, the early night. When were you born, Seb? <laughs> 96 so you're like you're a young man i was like i'm 10 years older than you so when i was growing up i watched all that stuff live like that was all coming on cinemax and like hbo and stuff when i was a little kid and i have a bunch of all my toys are probably from the 90s era of godzilla yeah i have uh my memories are actually pretty similar because i think my first exposure to godzilla might have been through hbo as well yeah That'd be... yeah they i they used to show Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah a lot when I was, like, four years old, so I remember seeing that on TV quite a bit. Who got you into Godzilla? Just yourself? Honest, yeah, honestly, myself. I was a little kid who adored dinosaurs, and I loved the idea of a dinosaur just destroying a city. Yeah. Because I hated people. Uh, and uh, I remember my... I think the first Godzilla movie I ever owned was Godzilla 1985, which my grandmother bought me from a video store that was getting rid of its VHS stock. And I think I wore that tape right out because I, I watch it almost every day. Yeah, that's a good intro, man. That's a good intro to, to Godzilla. I actually, I saw I saw the original one. That was the first time I ever saw Godzilla. My, my grandpa got me into Godzilla. So it's kind of funny that our grandparents got us going. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, and then, and then uh, the second one, God, it's so hard to remember all the times. Is it Godzilla's Revenge? Yeah, the one where the little kid makes friends with Godzilla's son. No, no, the the se- the first sequel to Gojira oh, was with uh, Godzilla it- raids again. Yes, oh, it's so much better than Godzilla's Revenge. It's such a good title. That's probably my favorite, actually, out of all of them. I love the fight scene in that one. It's yeah. so savage. Yeah, yeah. How many how many Godzilla movies are we at now? I think with this new one coming out, we're up to thirty two. Thirty two. Okay. Okay, I have. I own 20 of the 32 Godzilla movies out there. Are I we... think I own, like, 26 of them. Oh, you're beating me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I started I started collecting them when I was in the military, and everybody made fun of me for it. Nobody was down on... They liked... All my friends at that time liked the Italian stuff. They liked zombie, and they thought, you know, burial ground and stuff was pretty cool. But nobody... You know, girls would kind of be like, oh, cool, you have Godzilla posters hung up in your door, <laughs> you know? You know, it's it's weird, because I used to think there's this drift between horror fans and kaiju fans, but, like, the more and more I talk to people, there there is, like, an appreciation for them. It's just that finding people who like both is, is a little tough. Yeah. Well, my thing, I love, I love the craft of filmmaking, and there is such an amazing craft that goes into doing a kaiju movie. So I think the older we get, the more we're appreciating the fact that that building Godzilla just kicked over probably took somebody weeks to make, you know, or days and hours. Oh, yeah, well, it's amazing. Yeah, well, people people like to make fun of the, like, people who aren't familiar like to make fun of the goofy guy in a rubber suit, but in Japan, it's an art form. Absolutely. Like, it's an actual form of expression. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful in a lot of ways. I fully agree with you. <laughs> So getting okay, so we talked about Godzilla a little bit. What what's some of your other favorite? I guess Toho would probably be the main one, but what's some of your other favorite? I know you like um Oh, what's it called? The the turtle. Oh, uh, Gamera. Gamera, yeah. I never got into Gamera, but I know you like some Gamera. Oh, Gamera's oh man. You ever watch the nineties movies? Yeah. Yeah, those are just wacky. They're like insane. They're written by crazy people. They just have so many ideas in them, and I just I get a blast out of watching Gamera. 
It's Who? like Godzilla's crazier cousin. Yeah, that makes sense. Wh- who's um the the one? What's the one with the shark guy with the knife? Sh- the ah, uh, oh uh, man, Zigra. Zigra, yeah, I like him. He's cool. Yeah, telepathic shark. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> telepathic shark. That's so funny. Yeah, I, I I wish I maybe I will get into some gamma. I know I know there's only what like ten gamma's. Yeah, counting the one that came out in uh, 2006, I think there was like 10 or 11 of them. Okay. What My favorite um, kaiju movie of all time is War of the Gargantuas, which is... Uh, just an amazing movie. Yeah. What's it called in Japan? I think it's called Frankenstein's Heart or something. Heart of... uh, it's uh, something like Frankenstein's Monsters Gyra versus Sanda. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's even better. Um... um little f- fact about that movie. That movie is what made Brad Pitt want to become an actor. War of the Gargantuas? Yeah. He saw that on TV when he was a little kid, and he's like, yeah, I want to be an actor because I, of War of the Gargantuas. If I heard Brad Pitt say that, I'd give him a hug. I'd be like, wow, thank you for being so honest, man. That's fucking cool. Yeah, it is cool. And that's kind of the argument I always make whenever I tell somebody about War of the Gargantuas. Yeah, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Um. Yeah. War of the Gargantuas, for people at home who don't know, is a sequel to a movie called Frankenstein Conquers the World, which is another great title for a movie. And in that, Frankenstein's heart becomes is delivered from the Nazis to Japan, and it becomes radioactive, and it grows into a monster. Kind of a, a, a man that looks like he has Down syndrome, I guess, who starts growing into a giant monster, and he starts terrorizing Tokyo. So... To correct me on this if I'm wrong, Seb, but War of the Gargantuas, this monster, the Frankenstein monster from the first one, from Frankenstein Conquers the World, pieces of his skin fall off and they grow into two new monsters who are like... <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that. Who are like hairy... They look like they have Down Syndrome too. They have the low brow. I know it's not a nice comparison, but that's honestly... They, they look like Down Syndrome monsters covered in fur. They look like inbred Sasquatches. <laughs> yes, yeah. And there's a good one who's gold, and then there's a bad one who's green. And the, well, I first saw that movie when I was about six or seven. It scared the shit out of me because the green one would eat people, and then he'd pick their clothes out of his teeth. Like, he wouldn't eat the clothes. He'd just eat people and then pull the clothes out because, you know. I guess. And I think it's uh, the only time up until that point where a kaiju movie in a kaiju movie where the monster actually ate somebody. Yeah, there's a terrorizing scene where a woman's screaming in a mall. He picks her up and mun- you see him munch on her. And then he pulls her clothes out and throws it on the ground and walks away. And I was just like, what What if that happened to me? Like, uh, It's great. I think the spookiest moment for me in that movie is the very opening when an octopus attacks a ship and then the green gargantua fights it. And there's just something about the atmosphere in that scene with the thunder and the dark rain and all that. It's while amazing. It's fighting this big squirmy octopus yeah and, and the funny thing about the octopus at the beginning of that movie is in the japanese version of frankenstein conquers the world he fights a giant octopus and i think it got cut out of the american version yeah it was which is funny because i think it was made for the american version and they decided they didn't want it i think they initially wanted to market a third monster in the movie uh, and, uh, at the last minute decided it was a bit much who's the monster he fights at the end that's a godzilla monster right yeah, Baragon. Baragon, okay. Yeah, who is, uh, it's kind of funny that you should mention that, because originally it was going to be Frankenstein versus Godzilla, but then they decided to make Godzilla versus Mothra instead, so they brought Baragon into the Frankenstein film. That would have been so amazing, Frankenstein versus Godzilla. The weirdest thing is that the very earliest concept for the film was Frankenstein versus King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's got it's a complicated history i want to do i want to do dracula versus frankenstein versus godzilla versus king kong and i just want to be called that it's funny i was t- talking to a friend of, my, uh, of mine about that the other day in bram stoker's original notes for dracula it's just uh we found out that he initially wanted dracula to be able to become a giant man so i was like dude dracula versus godzilla should be a thing that would be so amazing. Fan film, do it. Was... it. Yeah, fan film. Done. <laughs> um, the new Godzilla, he looks pretty scary. Do you think they're picking up where, um, after Godzilla versus Destroya? 
Like, he looks like a um, zombie. I've heard, like, two varying rumors. One of them is that it ignores everything and just picks up where the original film left off. Oh, and, wow. Uh, Godzilla is kind of regenerating or something, I guess. Another theory I've heard is that this one's kind of a remake of the original and that he's kind of rotting away from the radiation over the course of the movie. Yeah. Well, because I think that, Godzilla vs. Destroya was, like, the worst. Like, that that movie depresses you, like, at the end when he's... No, wait, is it... Well, it hits you. That's, he, that's where one where he melts down, right? Yeah, Destroya. Yeah, that, I saw that on the Sci-Fi channel when I was a little kid, and, that, and I just watched it about two or three years ago. I remember talking to you on Facebook about it maybe two years ago, and I was like, that yeah. is the most brutal... I watched that in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, or... Yeah, and it's funny because Space Godzilla is so campy and fun, then you get to destroy it, and it's so downbeat and bleak and depressing. Yeah, it is. Cool monsters though. I love Destroya. Yeah, this yeah. Uh, what's his? What's that guy? Uh, James Rolfe. Whenever Destroya. Yeah, he always yeah he <laughs> likes to say Destroya. Good stuff. So it's it's actually a pretty good time to be like a, a kaiju fan because we have we had Legendary do their Godzilla movie, which was pretty cool, and now that was a good move. Now Toho is going to compete with them, and they're going to bring. Godzilla back to Japan and do it right. Yeah. And then... And, uh, uh, and on top of that, we still have, uh, like, uh, the sequel to Pacific Rim coming out. Oh, I didn't know that. Del Toro's doing another Pacific yeah, Rim? Yeah. It's got, uh, it's got the guy from the new Star Wars movie, uh, John Boyega in it. Oh, wow. Cool. And there's the new Kong movie coming out next year. Yeah, and then that Legendary's doing that one too, right? Yeah, and then they're doing Kong vs. Godzilla. Yeah, that's what I'm actually the most excited for, is Legendary's mashup of the two. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's kind of fucking cool, man, Like to have an American Godzilla vs. King Kong, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. It's going to be really neat. Out of... what? Oh, that's another Toho. What, what is it called? King Kong Raid? What's King Kong... It's not... Uh, King Kong Escapes? Yes. <laughs> that movie's nuts. <laughs> That movie is nuts. I uh, I I really love that movie. I do too. I have it on DVD, and I, there was a good couple months last year actually where I'd watch that like every night, and I I don't know why I just was like obsessed with that movie for a little bit. King Kong, King Kong looks so freaking weird in that movie. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. He looks like a drunk Muppet. <laughs> a Muppet on PCP. Yeah, that's that's what I uh. I showed a, a clip of it to my friend of Kong fighting the dinosaur, and he's like, it looks like Animal from the Muppets on PCP. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, so what's your what's your all-time favorite giant monster movie, then? Not, like, not, uh, not just Japanese stuff, just, like, in general? Well, I guess we're doing kaiju, so give me kaiju, and then we'll do in general. Okay, Kaiju is probably uh, and you're gonna hate this because it's a Millennium one, but uh, Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah giant monsters all out attack. You know, I might not have seen that one. That might be the only one from the the newer ones that I didn't see. It's uh, Godzilla is possessed by the spirits of pissed off uh, Japanese World War II soldiers, and Mothra, King Ghidorah, and Baragon have to defend Japan from him. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It, it is amazing. Oh, that's your favorite one. Yeah, that's my absolute favorite. The action sequences in that movie blow me away each time. I'm going to have to check it out. So then what's your favorite giant monster movie? Mm, that's a that's a good question. I think that I like avoiding the Japanese stuff for just the generalization of it all. I'd have to say... Um, man, it's a cliched choice and it's like the one that most people expect but i gotta say like the original king kong but that was my answer for that all yeah the, all the way it's a perfect movie i really wouldn't change a thing about that film no you know what i i even i like uh the second the sequel with this with his son just yeah kinda, i like it too it it's just, kind of it a rip me out at the end yeah oh i cried i cried for so long when i saw it when i was a little kid my grandpa's like stop crying it's just a movie man he was clay and I was I was so depressed. 
But that movie's kind of a riff off of Mighty Joe Young. They made him a little bit smaller and more lovable. Yeah, and I like I like the original Mighty Joe Young too. I think those make a pretty good giant ape trilogy. Yeah, they do. I, you know, it's funny because I think I saw all three of those movies for the first time at the same time, like on on AMC or TNT or something like that when I was a kid. Yeah, I first saw them all on that Turner Classic Movies as well. Well, do you ever watch El Rey? Do you have El Rey up there? No, I wanted to get the El Rey Network just for their kaiju marathons, and we don't have it here. It, it reminds me of watching TV when I was a kid in the 90s, man. I watched just random stuff on there. Most I own most of the movies I want to own by this point, but it's fun to just turn that on in the middle of the night when I get home from the bar or something, and it's like, oh, cool, you know, Big Trouble in Little China's playing, and it just kind yeah, of... Yeah, that's... I think that's why I'm always buying stuff is that so when because I work pretty late whenever I get home from work I always like to pop something on I always like having that variety there yeah but you mentioned The Walking Dead uh, in terms of TV shows all I really watch anymore is uh, The Strain and Penny Dreadful oh yeah I only watched the first first season of Penny Dreadful I love The Strain yeah. The I'm, la- man, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna marathon the past two seasons soon because third one's starting up in August. Yeah, I'm so excited for that. Uh, right. Shot in Toronto, incidentally. Is it really? Yeah, they uh, substitute Toronto for uh, New York. Okay. Fuck yeah. yeah! I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of. That's that's funny about where I live. I live um near Reno, Nevada. I found out there's yeah. a lot of movies filmed in this area because it's way easier to get permits and stuff out here. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And a lot of people will shoot here because uh, Ontario offers them a tax break. Is that what it is? production done here. That's fucking cool. Yeah. All right, man. You just sold me. I'm going to come make movies up there in Canada. <laughs> come do it. Oh. We'll give you money. Okay, I'm down. And it's so hot um, where I'm at right now. I'm like sweating. I'm miserable. I'm waiting for nighttime so I can leave my house. <laughs> um, crap. What were we just saying though? We're talking about calm, right? We uh no, we were talking about the strain. We kind of we we oh, yeah. derailed a lot. We went on. <laughs> yeah, the strain is amazing. It is, man. It it is a uh, del. It's it's our modern day Dracula. Like the '70s had Salem's Lot. And then, like, I don't know, when Richard Matheson wrote I Am Legend, but... And then you also have Night of Living Dead in 1968. That's a vampire movie, technically. Well, yeah, it's an adaptation of I Am Legend. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, it is. And, and so, so we, you know, every, every like, three or four decades, it seems like we get a new Dracula. So I, I consider The Strain to be our, our, like, Dracula for our, you know, generation or... Of oh, I agree. Old. And honestly, for, like, the... F- like the complete first season and the first half of the second season the master was the perfect dracula he was yeah i I don't know how i felt towards the end of season two when he changed bodies yeah that that was okay it just got really like hokey which i'm okay with to an extent but i felt like the second half of last season was just especially when he's i don't know i don't know how I well, have about. you ever have you read the books by any chance? No, I haven't, and we've we've talked about this before. You read the books, so it's like when I watch Walking yeah. Dead, I read all the comics. I'm look, they're messing with me as a comic book reader. Are they do? <laughs> is Del Toro doing that with the show too? Well, he was, and then like the last half of the second season, it made it so that any of the events that happen in the third book cannot happen in the next season of The Strain. So he's fucking with you guys too. Yeah, he is. He's really messing with all of us. That's cool. I like that. I now, now I kind of want to read the books before the third season starts. They're a good, like they're really fast reads. Yeah. So I, I'd recommend them. They're good stuff. Heck yeah. But no, you should also like. I need to watch season three because it's almost done. But you should catch up on Penny Dreadful as well because that went to some pretty cool places. Yeah, I I really enjoyed that show. I it. Yeah, Dracula was cool. They made him Egyptian, and like all of his wives attacking them at the end. I, I don't want to spoil, but the, that first season got, was is perfect. You got Doctor Frankenstein doing all his weird stuff. Yep, from got, got a cool monster in there. 
Oh yeah, when the when Doctor Frankenstein's first monster shows up, like I'm like, what? His first monster he makes. What what did he call him? Prometheus. Uh, Caliban. Oh, I mean the second monster he makes that gets. Oh, the second. Uh, it was Proteus. Proteus, thank you. I'm like Proteus is such a sweet guy. What what is this? This isn't Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> oh, I... And they just I felt so bad for that dude. <laughs> yeah, and then the real monster fucking shows up, and he is all business. He is a Frankenstein monster. Have you seen monster. it? Speaking of which, have you seen uh, Victor Frankenstein yet? No, I have not. I've been you 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 really like that movie, right? Oh, I, I'm in love with that movie. When the monster shows up in that movie, you will lose your mind. You will lose it. I wonder if I can rent that on um, PlayStation Network by now. I probably can. I should try and rent that tonight. Yeah, you should. Like, I'm telling you, those last, uh, like the mo- the way the story structured, you only get to see the monster for the last like ten minutes of the movie, but it's worth it. That sounds awesome. That's well, that's kind of the way you're supposed to do a monster movie. A lot of people have gotten away from that, obviously, because it's been done. But like, when you watch like an old older movie, it's like, like the original Nightmare on Elm Street. You don't really see Freddy very much. His face is in shadows, and it's he's a lot creepier yeah. in that first one. And uh. Well, especially with this, like, I was thinking of uh, the old Universal movies, you know, like House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, how the monster's on a slab the entire movie, and then at the very end, he gets up and he does his thing. Yeah. So, it's kind of like that. And then, I think Corman said, when the monster dies, you end the fucking movie. The movie's over. Monster dies, yeah, end I, the movie. <laughs> I And I agree with that, like... I, the past three times I've gone to the movie theaters, and they weren't monster movies. They were, well, what else was playing? They were comic book movies. But, like, I kept thinking to myself, the bad guy is dead. Roll the credits. Yeah. They just, they go on and on and get so, like, pompous. And movies seem so full of themselves a lot these days. Oh, yeah. Especially anything you're going to see in a theater is going to, it's, I don't know. It's a, kind of a cool time for us because we have a chance to where we can make movies that people can watch. But at the same time, everyone's doing it, so it's hard to kind of get through certain indie films. So, but when you find that, you know, that gym, I only feel like, like in the last ten years, I feel like the only movies I've really thoroughly enjoyed were independent films. Nothing from Hollywood really has. Yeah, I me. pretty much agree. The only examples of stuff I thoroughly enjoyed over the past few years are probably like Godzilla, Mad Max. Victor Frankenstein, stuff like that. But all those are kind of, like, I know Mad Max was, like, that was kind of independent, wasn't it? Well, it was an Australian production. Yeah, so it's, it, I mean, they're doing their own thing, and even Godzilla, like you said, you know, Legendary is, like, a side company of Universal. I noticed a yeah. lot of these bigger companies are so big that they're like, okay, let's start, like, Dimension Extreme and stuff, you know, like, they, they, they have to make, almost, they almost have to make a whole new company that, that's made just to do independent movies. Yeah, and you know that's not even a bad thing in my mind because it like instead of having to pick and choose from a certain studio, I can just focus on the side companies and yeah. look at what they're making. Absolutely. Yeah, I still like Universal. Universal's still probably my favorite major company out there. Oh, um, me too. I always told my friends I would never make a studio movie unless it was a Universal movie. Really? That's cool. I, yeah. I like that, man. I can't... I wouldn't want to work for Harvey Weinstein. I wouldn't want to work for... I don't know. Like, Lionsgate's whatever now, and... I would never go near Fox. No. Ugh. 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 <clears throat> Sorry, I threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> Which is weird, because Frankenstein was a Fox movie, but, like, they screwed the director over on that film, even. Like, they mess with filmmakers that are awful people to work for. Um, the the... Victor Frankenstein was Fox? Yeah, it was Fox, which is weird. You'd think it'd be Universal, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess I guess anybody can do a Frankenstein movie nowadays, though, right? Yeah, it's pu- that's the thing, though. It's public domain, but it takes a lot of story elements from the first three Universal movies. Huh. Yeah. So it's like, it felt like what the Universal reboot should be, but probably won't be. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm kind of hopeful. I like Dracula Untold a lot, so yeah. I'm excited yeah. to see where Universal goes with that series. Universal did the the Benicio del Toro Wolfman too, right? Oh yeah, and that's an amazing movie. It's great. I saw that in the theater like three times. When it came out in 2010. It was, it was the first R-rated movie I ever saw in the theater. That's awesome. That's very cool. 
I don't know. Yeah. I don't know uh, why it is. I'm excited to see the Mummy. Is is Universal doing the Mummy? Yeah, it's doing the Mummy, and uh, it's gonna connect a bunch of characters. I know that Russell Crowe is playing Doctor Jekyll in it, for instance, stuff like oh, that. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I you know I heard they're kind of trying to go the Marvel route, like. Yeah, they want to eventually. Well, they want to do like a bunch of movies and then have it end with a Van Helsing movie where he has to fight all of them at once or something like that. Which they've they've kind of done already, but it would be cool if they did yeah, it if they did yeah. it right. <laughs> I man, Van Helsing should be a perfect movie. It should be. It's it's everything that like a horror fan would want, but I don't know too many people who really like that movie very much. No, and I have really mixed feelings on it. I feel like if it was just... If it wasn't so uh, muddled with CGI, it would be a lot more enjoyable. I, you know, I think that's what it is. I think I agree with you. I think it, it's... Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. They get, they get really fucking weird with the vampires in that movie, too. Like... Yeah, they do. And, and like... <laughs> I hate any. I hate any movie where the werewolf just looks like a big dog, and that movie does that. Yeah. I like a wolf man, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Although Goosebumps, I like their werewolf in that movie. Yeah, yeah, like there are some examples I like. I think The Howling does that look the best, honestly. Yeah, oh man. Or Dog Soldiers, even Dog Soldiers does it a little differently. Yeah, Dog, Dog Soldiers is my favorite Neil Marshall movie by far. Most people probably say The Descent, but I, I, I dig Dog Soldiers. I've only seen Dog Soldiers and Doomsday, but I love them both. I even oh, love Doom. Doomsday, which a lot of people hate. No, I love Doomsday too. Fully agree that it's a good movie. That that that's speaking of Road Warrior, that is like Neil Marshall's oh. Road Warrior movie. I love how midway through, for like just about twenty minutes, it becomes a medieval film. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. With Malcolm McDowell as this crazy king. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Did you know Neil Marshall's working on Game of Thrones now? No, I didn't. That's really cool. Yeah, I just found that out. I don't know what he's doing. I think he writes for it or something. But I'm, I, I, I was. He kind of disappeared there for a while, right? He did Doomsday like I don't know, ten years ago or so. And, and yeah, it, it was right. Think, at, what's that? Well, oh, sorry. Well, he's been trying to get Dog Soldiers two made for like the past five years. Yeah, I know. I mean, that would be amazing. I never saw The Descent, and I pro I probably really should. It's it's not a bad movie, but I people raved about it so much when it first came out. I was in the military when that came out, and all my friends were, kept going to the theater to watch it. And I finally I bought it when it came out on DVD, and I, I just wasn't as impressed. Are the monsters cool? Yes, the monsters are very cool, and and I like what he does with the beginning of the movie, and I like how it's a good movie. It's a solid movie, but it's no dog soldiers. That's fair enough. Yeah, few movies are. Yeah, that's true. I remember seeing Dog Soldiers when I was like, I was probably in junior in high school, and that movie blew. Dog Soldiers and Twenty Eight Days Later are probably the two movies that make me want to be a filmmaker. Twenty Eight Days Later is really good. Yeah, I actually I just uh, got it for three dollars. I'm getting ready to watch it tonight. You know, it's a, uh, it's funny. I watched a werewolf movie not long ago called Howl, and it had the guy from Dog Soldiers in it for like two minutes. I thought that was really neat. How? I don't know. Is that is that is it English? Yeah, it's British. It's about this uh train that gets stuck in the middle of the woods and werewolves attack it. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it was neat. The werewolves are super strange looking. Like I don't even know how to describe it. They just uh I don't know. It wasn't a perfect movie, but I thought it was pretty fun. Yeah, those are the best ones, and the ones that aren't perfect. Did you uh, see uh, Wolf Cop? Yeah, and you know what? I didn't like it. No, neither did I. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was garbage. The... I was really mad while watching it. When I, I just don't understand why they made they kept showing his penis turned to a werewolf penis. Like there was like <laughs> it's so absurd. And the they... wolf. It's my least favorite kind of movie because it feels like a horror movie made by people who hate horror movies, and those are my least favorite things. Yeah, they they nudge you too much. They're like, oh, hey, werewolf. Dick. I get the same. 
I get the same vibe from Scream, and I always get shit for it, but I hate Scream so much. <laughs> you know, you're not the only one. Most, I think, genuine horror fans, they, I, I personally, I like the movie Scream. I enjoy that the way he nudges you. But I saw that movie when I was, like, nine years old, so. I think that might be the thing. I didn't see it till I was, like, 17, right? So. Yeah. I already had this, uh, I had this hype build around it, I suppose. But even then, I didn't care for it. I'm not a very big Wes Craven fan. Me and Alex talked about how I'm... He, he's, he's a pretty big Wes Craven fan. Like, when I do like a Wes Craven film, I like it a lot. But, like, Hills Have Eyes, Last House on the Left, all that stuff, I, or Rainbow and the Serpent or whatever, I don't really like any of that. In my mind, he has two great movies that I've seen. What the Nightmare on Elm Street okay. and, and Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Swamp... Okay. So three movies for me. Have you ever seen Deadly Fred? No, I've seen that. I've seen the scene where the girl breaks the guy's head open with a ball. I think that's pretty funny. Yeah, I I love that movie. That's actually that that is on the same level as Nightmare on Elm Street for me. They came out. He did Nightmare on Elm Street, and I think he did Deadly Friend. Yeah, that sounds. They're both eighty four, right? Uh, Deadly Friend was eighty six, I believe. Okay, so they were two years apart. Yeah, so it, it still has those effects, and it has... Deadly Friend is fucking insane. It's hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a kid with a robot meets a girl who's being abused. Something bad happens to her, so he turns her into a robot, basically. It's kind of like a fucked up Bride of Frankenstein. That sounds kind of neat. That sounds like something I dig. I think you would like it. I definitely... It, I, I remember watching that movie a lot when I was a little kid. Uh, but no, like, Craven, like, of the big name horror directors, he was always my least favorite. I'm glad somebody agrees with me on this. Most people tell me to shut up when I start making fun of... John Carpenter's my favorite director, probably. He's up there. Brian Yeah, Car- Carpenter's prob- probably my favorite as well. Carpenter's just got every movie I like, His all of his movies. I, uh, my favorite of his is probably, uh, Prince of Darkness. Oh, man, that movie is so fucking bleak. <laughs> it's, it's so depressing. It's one of the, it's one of the only movies where I will say it's an evil movie. It kind of is, yeah. I agree. It's the only film I ever watched that gave me nightmares. And it's because of those freaking dream sequences with the silhouette in the doorway. Yeah, well, the ending of that movie gives me chills when he's going for them. It's like, why? Don't don't touch that mirror. Do not touch the mirror. Yeah, it's it's creepy. It gets under your skin. And when I, I met John Carpenter at a convention a couple years ago, and I told him that's the only movie to give me nightmares, and he said, well, I'm glad I got the job done with at least one person. <laughs> yeah, I don't... No, I love the... Oh, go on. Oh, I was going to say, I, I think most of his movies probably scared me when I was a kid. Him and Stephen King were probably the most scary. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Carpenter just gets under the skin. Like, he, I remember the first time I watched The Thing was during a snowstorm, and it, <laughs> it weirded me out for the rest of the week. I was lost. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I love yeah. The Thing. The Thing is great. Uh... Christine was like my grandpa's favorite movie. He loves the car and that. And Christine's really good. Yeah, uh, Halloween of course is great. Um, Big I, Trouble in Little China. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, I even like um, two two of his worst movies would be uh, Vampires, which is amazing if you're a vampire fan. Like that was like he was trying to do from Dust Till Dawn almost. I've never seen that one. But You've never I seen love James Woods. Oh, I think you would like Vampires, dude. You should watch Vampires and um, Escape from L.A. Not Escape from New York. Escape from L.A. was a sequel. Dude, I like Escape from L.A. a lot more than Escape from New York. I would agree with you. And mostly just because of the shark. The, there's a shark <laughs> that tries to eat him when he's surfing or something. I don't know what the hell is going on. Surfing with Peter Fonda. It's yeah. So... <laughs> I, I love, love that, movie. that movie. Yeah, it's that's a total 90s movie, like to the T. A movie of his that gets a lot of hatred that I've always loved is Ghosts of Mars. Oh, yeah. That is a solid movie. That was kind of the... A lot of people thought that was the end of his career, almost. Man, you know what? That movie is just made by a guy who cares about nobody but himself, and it shows, and I love it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's a good movie, man. I don't care. I would put Ice Cube in a movie. 
got a good cast. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, uh, I haven't seen his most recent film, though, The Ward. Yeah, it wasn't very good. That was, like, his supposed to be his comeback, and it wasn't, like... I, I, yeah, I know. I heard it was garbage. No, I think it's a good movie. It's just not carp... It's, it doesn't... I don't know. It's hard to... It's Like I said, you know, you get... There's... You get past a certain point, and then it's kind of like... Carpenter yeah. always was Carpenter to me until I watched The Ward, and it's like, oh, uh, I don't know what this is. It doesn't feel like Carpenter. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. It's a, it's a, it's really sad how it happens to almost all of these guys, where after a certain point, they just give up. Yeah. Well, and the problem I, is a lot of these guys are trying to they're trying to do the Hollywood thing and they go off of box office and stuff. And to me, like I would be more stoked on making like an Evil Dead, you know, something that yeah. maybe stews for a little while before anybody knows what it is. Troll I, uh, two or something. I think shit. the one that this hit the hard that this like symptom almost hit the hardest was Toby Hooper. Yeah, Toby Hooper had it rough. Like. He was really good up until, like, the late 80s. Then it was just straight garbage from that point on. When did he do, um... I thought Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was a, a, a genius sequel. Oh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, it's amazing that how he, he made Texas Chainsaw and then he did the second one. It was amazing how different those two movies are. And how they kind of capture... You know, like, the first one captures the 70s perfectly. Like, 70s horror, for me at least. And then the second one was just... That was like the perfect 80s movie. Yeah, it is. And it's so... It's insane and colorful. And I love all the characters. I love Dennis Hopper and Chop Top and all of them. They're so good. Romero kind of did that with um, the difference between Night of the Living Dead and uh, Dawn of the Dead. It was like, whoa, man. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, like like in uh, Night of the Living Dead, it's all about racial tension, and then in Dawn of the Dead, it's all about, like, class tension and stuff like that. Yeah, consumerism, and... Yeah, I, man, I feel so bad for that, dude. Those, those, like, I love everything from Night of the Living Dead up until uh, Land of the Dead, and then Diary and Survival are shit to me. Yeah, I love I loved Land of the Dead, too. I saw that in theaters when I was 18, I think. Yeah, that's good stuff. It is good, and it, I think it's aged well. I think I like it more now than I did when it first came out, even. I agree. It's a it's a movie that, like, even now you see more and more people coming around to it. It's well, just one of those things that had to sit for a while, I well, think. Well, Day of the Dead, man. People dogged that movie for decades before people were like, no, Day of the Dead's really good. <laughs> yeah, I like it more than Dawn, honestly. Day of the Dead's my favorite out of all of them. I, I like it better than Night. Yeah, me too. I, I think I'd rate them as like day, night, dawn, land, survival, diary, from best to worst. For <laughs> yeah, me. that's that's a good that's a good order for me too. <laughs> Fucking sur- survival wanted it wanted to be good. It wanted to be so good, and it wasn't. Like, man, it's depressing. It it's felt like, it didn't feel like one... a Romero movie. It felt like something I'd watch on sci-fi, like a sci-fi original or something. It, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, even like not long ago, I watched one of those sci-fi channel zombie movies because they're on all the time now. And I was thinking to myself, there is absolutely nothing different between this and Survival of the Dead. Yeah. They're the same movie. Um, I won't even. I only saw Diary of the Dead one time, and I've had major arguments with some of my friends on this. Diary of the Dead is the worst movie I've ever seen. I think it's, it's pretty a, awful. It's, it's it's up there with. Return of the Living Dead, Necropolis, and Rave from the Grave <laughs> for letting no, out to me. I'd rather watch either of those because at least those aren't found footage movies. That's true. Yeah. I, I hate found footage. Hate it. I, I remember I, I spent three years... Return of the Living Dead is one of my favorite series. And, the third one's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Speaking of Brian Usna, bring it back to Brian Usna. It always comes back to him. He, uh, he did an amazing job with that movie. But um, I spent a good solid three to four years following the production of Return of the Living Dead Necropolis and Return of the Living Dead Rave from the Grave. And they both premiered on Sci-Fi Channel a month before I shipped out for basic training. So it was my, my, my two last movies as a, as a kid that I was excited about, and they were the biggest letdowns. <laughs> like, I wanted, like I wanted to cry at the end of Rave from the Grave. 
it's even more depressing when you hear what the original script would have been like. Which oh, sounds yeah. Kind of like, like, do you know what Necropolis was originally about? They were going to keep going with the bioweapon scheme, right? They were going to keep that going. Well, even before that... Well, yeah, that was part of it, but the idea was that the Trioxin gets let into an amusement park called oh, Necropolis. Shit. It would have been about the Trioxin bioweapons taking over an amusement park. Oh, wow. Yeah. That could have been amazing. Yeah, they should have combined those two movies. And uh, there was an interview with the writer of them, and he said, when they bought that copy of the script, they didn't speak to me for two years, and then out of nowhere the movie premiered. I watched it for about two minutes and realized that it wasn't my script and turned it off. Yeah, well, they, yeah, and they, you know, I, um, Return of the Living, Brian Huston's Return of the Living Dead didn't necessarily do Return of the Living Dead correctly, I guess you could say, but it was still, like, such a good movie that you don't care. And even, and even then, you can get, you can see where it fits in in that universe. Absolutely. But, like, you know, in the first movie, it didn't matter if you got bit by the zombie or not. It, you have to have the chemicals or whatever. But I, I don't know, because, like, if they bit into your brain, you wouldn't come back. But then you have skeletons coming to life, so it's not like you have to have a brain to be a zombie. Yeah. So it's kind of confusing. But then the second one had its own thing where electricity would kill them or... or put them back into the it would take them out to put them into the thing the canisters or whatever so yeah you, you could take all three of those and, first movies and do something amazing with the fourth movie and kind of bring it all together and like i haven't watched necropolis or rave to the grave in a good five years but wasn't wasn't necropolis just a resident evil knockoff uh yeah i would say so and it, you could tell it was made by a, a foreign person yeah it's the guy who made eight-legged freaks who directed both of those yeah, and I like Eight-Legged Freaks, but... Me too, and I feel like he just wrecked his career because he hasn't done anything since those two movies. It, it, I don't think he understood punk very well. I think he was trying to make punks, and they weren't. They were just, like, kind of weird. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that movie. It's just, I, I could just tell a foreign person made those fucking movies. It felt almost like an Uva Bowl movie. Yeah, which I normally can get behind. I actually like him, but... <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. It's an Uva Bowl movie without the fun or the energy. Man, can you imagine if he did a Return of the Living Dead movie? It would be insane and offensive, and I'd love it. <laughs> House of the Dead is the worst movie. House of the Dead is garbage. It is such garbage. Is that seven-minute-long fight scene where they just play the same rap song over and over it, again? In the 360 camera angles, it's like, Where's your line of symmetry, Bull? What are you doing to my line of symmetry? It's so good. Yeah, it it's is. It's garbage. I saw but that. I, li I like a lot of his stuff. I like Alone in the Dark. I think that's an okay monster movie. Yeah, yeah. I liked, um, my favorite is actually probably Postal. That movie's wacky. It's a wacky I movie. Seen, I haven't seen that one. I, I need to. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would recommend Vampires over all that, but. <laughs> yeah. Vampires speaking is good, of vampires, uh, Speaking of vampires, another bull movie I actually love is Blood Rain. I like Blood Rain a lot. I do too. Yeah. He grew on me as an adult. I have... Because the first thing I ever saw was House of the Dead. And I was a big House of the Dead fan. And that came out shortly after Re Resident Evil came out. And Resident Evil was a letdown in the sense that as a fan of the game, I wanted to see Resident Evil in a movie form. But I still enjoy that movie to this day. That's a good zombie flick. So when House of the Dead came out, I was pissed. I was like, who the fuck? What is this? Yeah, it's... Because at least Resident Evil has some of the same monsters and whatnot, but yeah. House of the Dead has nothing. No, it's, it has nothing game. to do with House of the Dead at all. It's just some weird German guy doing what he wants. Did you ever see the sequel? Yes, I did. Uh, it's it's kind of better. It's, it's good cheese. It's excellent cheese. I like that... Uh, Curian from the games was in it, and he was played by Sid Haig. Yeah. Who, it wasn't, oh no, I was thinking, for some reason I was thinking Rico was in it from, um, Starship Troopers. Oh, Casper Van Dien? Yeah, he's in a, he's in a vampire movie around that time. Uh, Slayer. Yeah, Slayer, oh with, my god. With Danny Trejo. Yes. That was an interesting That was one. a, that was a sci-fi channel movie. Was it really? Back when they did actual 
good movies. Yeah, I watched that on Netflix. Probably. I haven't I haven't seen it, but like I always see whenever I go to the pawn shop here, it's always there, and I always think about it, but I never pick it up. It's it's not very good, but mm. it's good. And I know it's got a uh, it's got that guy from Underworld in it, the guy with the really deep voice. Yeah, he is in it. Yep. Yeah. Did you know that? I like that guy a lot. He, yeah, he's one of the writers for Underworld. He he was one of the writers. Yeah, and he also wrote uh, I Frankenstein, and he acted in that too. That movie is so crazy. I love that movie. And I really love that movie. I don't know what the fuck is going on in that movie. It came out on my 18th birthday, and me and my friends went to see it, and we all had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I yeah I could see like that being. A, I don't know. Um, I actually have a question for you. Do you know if the Danny McBride that wrote Underworld is the same Danny McBride from? Eastbound and Down. That's actually a great question. Let's, I'm actually gonna take. Yeah, I'm gonna Google this. Yeah, because I'm curious now. I think he is. This will be the final thing we talk about. Just appreciating Danny McBride a little bit. <laughs> no, it's not the same guy. Damn it! I was so excited. Could you imagine if he wrote Underworld? I would like, I, for whatever reason, I wouldn't be surprised because Danny McBride's a lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. He. Have you ever seen the Foot Fist Way? No, I haven't. All right. There's another movie for you, Seb. Perfect. Perfect. He's a Taekwondo instructor, and it's. Have you ever watched Eastbound and Down? Uh, my dad watches it, so I've like caught a bit of it here and there. It's that character on that show, the pompous asshole baseball player guy from the '80s with the mullet. He's yeah. that character with a crew cut, and he's a Taekwondo instructor. That's where that character comes from. Is the foot fist way? That sounds perfect. It is amazing, and, and, and Will Ferrell, I think, produced it or got it out there, and that's kind of what got Danny McBride going. I like Ferrell as a producer. He did uh, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunter, which is enough to warrant my respect. Yeah, he has he has he's a tasteful man. Except he's a man of simple tastes, a humble man if you will. Yes. He's Canadian too, isn't yes. he? I I believe he might be, Fuck. which is you know what just one second. Now I got to google this. <laughs> you guys got all the good best people. You guys got Tom Green. We do have Tom Green. You got Cronenberg. You, you can thank me personally for Freddy Got Fingered. No, uh, Will Ferrell's from California. Son of a bitch. Um, God damn it. <laughs> I can thank can't you personally for Freddy Got Fingered? Sorry? Did you say you can thank me personally for Freddy Got Fingered? Yeah, you can thank me personally for that one. Why? Why, because uh, I'm not Tom Green, but I'm the closest thing to Tom Green you're going to find. He's from Ontario too, right? Yep, he is. I am, um, yeah, I grew up watching Tom Green, and I, I love that guy. Yeah, did you ever see the, one of my favorites is his skit where he's in New York looking for Chud. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was old, that was before, see, it sucks because he was on, he was on Canadian, like, public access for a long time before he made it to the Comedy Network, so the only thing yeah. you can really get is his, like, second go at, at doing public access TV, that's, the, the rest of that's gone, I guess, like, a lot of it's just gone. Yeah, a lot of it, like, the way t uh, public TV tends to work, from my understanding, is that after so many years, they just scrap it. Yeah, it's it doesn't exist anymore. He, If you go to his YouTube, you can look up Tom Green now, and, and it, he has a pretty good YouTube channel, and he has a lot of the old skits that aren't. But I, I just remember when he took the, the comedy, the Canadian comedy channel, what's it called? Do you know? Do you guys still have it there? Uh yeah, it's just called comedy. Okay, well, he was on comedy, and he took all that and re-edited it, and had, it was like a three-disc set, and I would watch that every night at work sometimes. Like, I'd go on week benders of just Tom Green's Canadian, I don't know, it was great. It, it, I love the Canadian public access stuff way better than the NTV stuff that he did when I was a kid. He was, like, here in the town where I live, and he was here for, like, a show about a month ago. Have you ever met him? No, I've never met him, but like it, it's weird. We keep getting these celebrities visiting town, and I always miss out on them. I missed out on him. I missed out on Danny Trejo. Oh, I love Danny uh, Trejo, man. I missed out on uh, what's the name of the wife from uh, 
the National Lampoon Vacation movies. Oh, um, gosh darn it. Beverly D'Angelo? Yes, yes. Yeah, I missed out on her. Oh, man. Brooke Shields is here every other month doing a TV movie, which is, you know, something, I guess. Yeah, I, I, there's, you know, like, I, I like people like Bruce Campbell, and I like, I like Stephen King and stuff. I don't care about meeting those dudes ever, but if I could meet Tom Green and hang out with him for a couple hours, I'd be stoked on that. I think he'd be down, he, he seems like a pretty down-to-earth guy. I, well, I remember when I was a teenager, he put his cell phone number on his website, and I called him, and he talked to me for like an hour one night. Oh, cool. what was he like? Just really cool. He was just giving me movie, like, advice on filmmaking, and... Then I called when he started getting his WebOvision thing going like 12 years ago in in his living room. I called that and he was like, well, I'm just a mere couple feet away from my Raspberry Wars, so I'm a good person to call for that. (laughs) I don't care what anybody says. It's pretty good fingered. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, there's a lot wrong with it, but... No, that's a great movie. movie. I almost am happy that movie got a Raspberry. It, It just makes it that much better for me. It's too good for people to like it. Well, and if you if you know his backstory and you know where he comes from, like if you watch his stuff and you kind of get like he was living with his parents when he was in his late twenties and probably yeah. probably going a little insane and um, I don't know. There, there's so much truth to that compared to like his book and like stuff that I'd already learned from you know his interviews and stuff. I really wish the Zebras in America was a real show. Me too. I'd watch it all the time. I would too. Yeah. He should make an animated like show. Yeah, he should. You know what? I should If I ever live out my fantasy of one day remaking Chud, I will put him in that. I will <laughs> do that. That's my promise. You have a fantasy to remake <laughs> Chud? Yeah, cuz I don't like Chud, but I'm like I should like this. So one day I want to make it into something I can like. Did you ever see the second one? Yeah, I love Bud the Chud. Yeah, I like Bud. Man, the original Chud is genius. Daniel Stern, the voice of the Wonder Years, is a homeless man in that. See, that's the thing. I love the characters. I love the monsters. But the movie is boring to me. Well, you know, and you also said that you don't like watching horror movies made by people who obviously probably don't really give a shit about horror movies. That yeah. Chud is definitely made by a bunch of comedians who probably don't give a shit about horror movies. Well, yeah, have you ever listened to the audio commentary? It's the best thing about that DVD. I Usually, when I watch Chud nowadays, I put on the commentary on it. It's the only way I can watch it, because they make me laugh a lot. Yeah, no, those guys are funny. Love John Hurd. Yeah, he's he's good. But no, one day I'll remake Chud, hopefully. I'll allow it, man. I'll come watch it. Yeah, I'll come. I'll, I'm glad. I'll I'm be glad your Daniel Stern. Have... Yeah, perfect. I can grow my hair out all crazy. You'll be Daniel Stern and Tom Green will be the cop. <laughs> oh man, sold. Sold. Like I'm glad. Like by the time I make it, movie tickets will be thirty bucks. So at least I'll make thirty bucks off of it. Yeah. You, it's sure thing with me, man. Thirty bucks. Perfect. All right, Seb. Well, I really appreciate you calling in. I gotta edit this down to half an hour somehow. <laughs> oh shit. But I don't really feel like there's much to cut out, so maybe I'll do, like, a two-parter or something. Yeah, well, you know, you can cut out the Tom Green stuff, but just kidding. Don't You do what's right, and I will be back here whenever you want me. Oh, thank you so much for calling, but I'm sorry it took me so long with the internet and everything. Oh, no worries. I was just like, oh, boy, did he forget about the time? No, no, I just just, Internet went out. Um, how long have we been friends, Seb, before we wrap this up? About four years, I guess. Four years? Four or five. Did you add me or did I add you? I believe you added me. I don't remember. I don't remember how we met, man. I've just been for. I feel like you've always been there. <laughs> I, oh, I I feel like you commented on uh on a mutual friends thing and we got to talking on that. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, I cherish our friendship. I hope we're friends for a long time to come. Hope we work together someday. Yeah, that'd be sweet, man. I'd, I'd definitely be down for that. Um, are are you making it public, or, like, is it public, your short movies? Yeah, or... Yeah, yeah, they are, and if, uh, anybody who's interested can message me on Facebook, I'm pretty open publicly with my films, uh, if anybody wants to review them, I'm always looking for reviews, I'm up for anything, 
if people just want to talk about kaiju monster movies horror movies i i'm pretty approachable I like absolutely i agree yeah um oh man now i can't wait for your your feature oh me either it's gonna be nuts the people who've read the script said it's one of the grossest things they've ever read yeah uh yeah it i, I haven't read the script but just the title alone i know and i know where you're coming from with what movies you talk about and the stuff you talk about it's like oh fuck what is this? Yeah, gonna it's going to be nuts. Well, I look forward to it, bud, and I hope you have a good night. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, yeah, thank you, and have a good night as well. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Yep, peace. That, I can't pronounce your last name, Seb. I, I need you back on here. I need to call you again. Uh, That was Seb. Gadin? 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 He's from Ontario, Canada. He's been making movies for a very long time. We've been, we've been friends for a while. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I have no clue what the fuck is happening next week. It doesn't matter. I'll find somebody cool to talk to. Um, this is the last episode. It was a perfect last episode. Um, yeah, check out Seb. Check out all these dudes I've been talking to. These guys um, are very underrated, and they should be much bigger than they already are. So... Thank you for listening to House of Gilliland. I'll see you guys next week.